If you'll take your scripture passage, uh, I think I'm going to c continue this new tradition that I started three, two Sundays ago, and that just, rather than read the whole passage, I want to read it a passage at a time, a sentence or two at a time, so that the full import of the scripture can be developed more. So we're starting to read at John 10, beginning at verse 11. And this is Jesus speaking. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd puts the sheep before himself, sacrifices himself if necessary. Most of us do not understand raising sheep. I always kid kid my friends saying uh, one reason I got sheep is because Muhammad once said that no great prophet <laughs> was ever a prophet unless they first were a shepherd so see I want to be a shepherd to be a great prophet <laughs> and follow the Quran but, but when you look back at it David was a shepherd and God took David from being a good shepherd to the sheep to being a good shepherd for the children of Israel. David made a lot of mistakes, but David was the greatest king in the history of Israel. He was greater than his son Solomon because he made mistakes, he openly admitted, and he continued to ask to be filled with the Spirit of God. And ancient shepherds would put their sheep in an enclosure and they would sleep at the entrance of their sheepfold. A wild beast coming in to kill the sheep would have to walk over their body. And so they, they really, the good shepherds, it was more than a job to them. They were willing to sacrifice themselves. And then Jesus describes people that aren't good shepherds. A hired man is not a real shepherd. He's talking about a bad employee, really. The sheep mean nothing to this bad shepherd. He sees a wolf come and runs for it, leaving the sheep to be ravaged and scattered by the wolf. He is only in it for the money, and the sheep don't matter to him. Unfortunately, from time to time, we will see religious leaders who are in it for the money, and they really don't care about the sheep, the Christians that God has entrusted to them. And when bad times happen, they just run. And it's really important when you come to church, don't keep your eyes on the elders and deacons, don't keep your eyes on the pastors. Keep your eyes on Jesus because elders, deacons, pastors, myself included, from time to time can harm your faith. Keep your eyes on the good shepherd, Jesus is saying. I'm the good shepherd. You know, the really good elders and deacons and pastors try not to offend people but they're human beings. They got feet of clay. And so really focus on Jesus. And I, fortunately, I grew up in a church where they taught that. And I never lost my faith as a Christian. But if that is not taught in congregations, uh, and some congregations are really one person centered, the pastor or the pastor's uh, staff. And you're going you're gonna to be disappointed. You're never going to be disappointed in Jesus. But human beings will disappoint you. My grandpa Norris had to leave home when he was 12 years old. His father ran away with the the lady who helped on their farm, the, the hired help, he ran away with her. 
He had a terrible childhood. He had to ride the rails looking for work. He would get on a, these trains. There used to be a lot more trains. And he would ride the rails and find places to work at 12, 13. Finally, he ended up in Wyoming. He married my grandma, and they started going to the Christian church in Wheatland, Wyoming. A businessman in that church cheated him, and he quit going to church. He had his eye on a human being in the church, and he never went to church again. I'm sure he believed in Jesus. Grandma and all six of their kids went to church. But he took his eyes off of Jesus. A mature Christian won't do that. Somebody in the church treats you wrong, you just say, okay, that was a Doubting Thomas, or that was a James and John, or, or that was a Judas, and you just keep your eyes on Jesus. But Grandpa Norris uh, didn't do that. His bad example is a, is a good example to all of us. Now, many people say, why in the world are you talking bad about your relatives? Truth is truth. And you're going to remember that Grandpa Norris story, aren't you? <laughs> and you and I know people that have quit coming to church because Bad News Bear treated them bad in church. It also can be the church dragon lady, too. <laughs> that said a gossip or bad word, and people quit coming to church because it's some other man or woman. When you and I stand before God, and, hey, you remember this Good Shepherd story? I, Jesus warned you about bad shepherds. And you remember David, he actually killed a bear. And there used to be bear in Palestine that was trying to kill his father's sheep. And he killed a lion, and there used to be African lions in Palestine. They lived in the Jordan River Valley. There was a lot of game there. These were full-blown African lions. And that's, that's quite an animal to kill. Mountain lions, where I grew up, scared me. <laughs> I saw one of those things jump across a fence one time. It weighed way over 100 pounds, and the muscles were rippling in its shoulders. I can't imagine killing an African lion, but David did. He was a good shepherd. And then Jesus says some wonderful words here. Verse 14, I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep. Obviously, he knows you and I by name. And my own sheep know me. In the same way, the Father knows me, and I know the Father. Every morning when I get out to feed my sheep, uh, they stand expectantly looking at me. And uh, I try not to feed them too much in the summertime because they're lawnmowers for about half my place. <laughs> I don't like to mow lawn. <laughs> So I fenced off half my place, and I have three different pastures, and they mow that lawn, <laughs> gets a little high in another lawn. I, I just rotate them. My pastures are the luscious they've ever been because the sheep are uh, making uh, deposits all over the place. <laughs> and I have the best grass I've ever had, but I don't overgraze. And I rode them. And when they see me, they look at me expectantly, and every morning I say to them, hey, sheep, how you doing? They know that's food time. When I'm walking around and I don't say, hey, sheep, they know who I am, but they don't get excited. But it's, I wish the kids here, sometime maybe we can take all the kids uh, down to our place and, and, and listen to the sheep baa. Uh, baa, baa. That's when, that's when food is available. And I feed them whole corn. And then I feed them a high-protein mix. I alternate those and make sure they have plenty of salt. And this has been my class on raising sheep. <laughs> <laughs> the last two Sundays, we talk about how Jesus knew Thomas's name. 
And Jesus knew Peter's name in a special way, both those people. And he called, the angel said, in the tomb said, and tell the disciples, and tell Peter. And then uh, Jesus went straight to doubting Thomas and he said, look at my hands and look at my side. I'm the real deal. Jesus was specifically concerned about Peter and specifically concerned about Thomas and Jesus is specifically concerned about you personally and knows your name. I know my own sheep and my own sheep know me in the same way the Father knows me and I know the Father. I put the sheep before myself sacrificing myself if necessary. You know, if you had a really good employee that employee will sacrifice themselves. Uh, I'm going to do a little bragging, okay? I, I worked for four years with boats on a lake. Thirty years after I worked down there, the owner that I worked for, his son is running that boat place. He says, oh, yeah, you're Ron Cobb. You were one of our best workers because I sacrificed myself. All through high school, I worked there every summer, and I'll tell you, sometimes it's 12-hour days, but I... You know, I enjoyed what I was doing. I loved helping people rent boats. We had about 100 rental boats. It was unbelievable. And, and they, they knew that I was a good worker. Uh, Jesus says, you know, I really am going to sacrifice myself for you. And then Jesus describes it a little, a little bit more. You need to know that I have other sheep in addition to those in this pen. I know it's going to be hard for you to believe, but Methodists, Catholics, Baptists, Lutherans are some of those other sheep. <laughs> We're just not the only sheep in this, in this flock. And sometimes cross-breeding is really important. If, you know, if you just, flocks will get inbred, and so you need to bring a slightly different kind of sheep as a ram, to get cross-fertilization. I have learned a lot from my Lutheran, my Baptist, my Pentecostal, my Catholic friends, and they've cross-fertilized my faith. And so uh, anyone that follows Jesus is our brother and sister, and they're maybe not exactly in this fold, but they're part of God's kingdom. And that would include all the people in the world as well. Uh, Jesus is talking about a worldwide thing here. And Jesus said, these other people and these other flocks, they'll recognize my voice as well. Unfortunately, a, a third of the world, it used to be a fourth, now it's a third of the world, recognizes Jesus, but they don't recognize him as Messiah our Islamic brothers and sisters. They believe everything you and I believe about Jesus except the resurrection. And of course, the resurrection is crucial. But Islam has taken the name of Jesus in places the Christians never went. So there's a lot of people in Islamic countries and most, most of us don't realize this. There's a lot of secret believers because Jesus is mentioned in the Quran and then People get Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in Islamic countries. They read it and say, oh, this is not what Islam teaches, but I'm going to follow Jesus, but I can't follow him open open or, or I'll get killed. Islamic countries are full of believers. But we can't talk about it. Just like I had to leave things out of my book on Islam about the Mufti or the Islamic people would kill them. Uh, there's a lot of secret believers in other flocks. You and I are going to be really surprised when we come to heaven. Really surprised. I could go on and on on that one, but I'm, I'm going to... You eventually would like to get out, right? <laughs> but they will recognize Jesus' voice. Then it will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me. I freely lay down my life. 
and I am also free to take it up again. Jesus is trying to make this real clear to you and me. No one took Jesus' life. It wasn't the Jews. It wasn't the Romans. It wasn't the religious people in the temple that wanted all their money and power. He laid it down freely. When you take the bread and the cup of communion, he consciously laid his life down for you, and he knows your name. This is a personal thing. When you take that bread and cup and you remember his broken body and shed blood, he consciously laid that down for you by name. You're just not a number with Jesus. I have the right to lay it down. I have the right to take it up again. Essentially, this is God speaking through Jesus. I receive this authority personally from my Father. You have received a tremendous amount of authority as a follower of Jesus personally from God. There's a, there's a song that says, Into the love of Jesus, deeper and deeper I go, seeking to know the reason why he should love me so. Let me encourage you. Have morning devotions every day. I spent an hour with a friend of mine this last week having a lot of problems. Wonderful Christian. Are you having morning devotions? I ask him. Because 10 years ago, I asked him the same question. No, I'm not. If you want to work your way through these problems, I said, start every morning. It doesn't have to be a huge chunk of time. Start every morning. Say, God, this is me. I need some help. Read about the life of Jesus. Read daily devotions. Your depression, your anxiety, all these other problems would be greatly lessened if every single day you get back to where you used to be in having morning devotions. Pastors don't talk about this too much. The greatest mental health in the world is the life and teachings of Jesus of Nazareth. One of the great secrets of Freedom Friday and every 12-step group is a loving Heavenly Father and Mother who never leaves us and never forsakes us. And those of you listening at home on YouTube, you are never alone. God knows you by name. You mean more to God than can possibly be described because God died for you through Jesus personally and was risen from the grave personally. And you are loved. Amen.